Welcome to Smarter Seasoning, session two of basic training. I am Jack Bishop and I wanna be your kitchen coach. I'm gonna teach you ways to make your food taste better. We're gonna start by talking salt and pepper. So salt comes from two different sources, the sea, as well as underground mines, actually evaporated seas that long ago uh, covered the earth. Uh, probably what's more important is how we think about salt in terms of texture. It can be really fine, like table salt, which often has some anti-caking agents added so it pours, or it can be coarser, uh, like kosher salt or a lot of uh, sea salts uh, are really very coarse. And this really matters because when you think about cooking versus finishing. So if you're cooking with salt, use the cheapest thing you have. It's gonna dissolve, they all taste the same. But when you're finishing food at the table, coarse salt, especially really flaky salt, like this sea salt from England, Malden, which has got these really flaky crystals, is really lovely. The other thing about texture is that it, it impacts how salt measures. So really fine table salt packs down into a teaspoon and you end up getting twice as much salt in that teaspoon as if you're using a coarse kosher salt. So remember, coarse salts, good salts, save them for the table. You can, just for regular cooking, either stick with kosher salt or with table salt. Now, I'm gonna show you something. You often see chefs on uh, cooking shows, they're holding their hands really up high when they are seasoning. So I'm gonna show you what happens when you go real low um, and you season kind of right on top of the food. All right, and now I'm gonna go up high and season the same food. So what you see here is I oversalted here. I oversalted here when my hand was really low as opposed to it's a lot more even when my hand is up high. So when you're seasoning food, keep your hand 12 inches above the counter. Okay, salt's partner in the kitchen, pepper. So white pepper, black pepper, green pepper, all come from the same tropical plant. They're little dried berries. Szechuan peppercorns, pink peppercorns, different family, different plant despite the name. Uh, black pepper is what we use in the kitchen. Probably the most important thing to know is don't obsess about uh, different varieties. Yes, there's some differences between Telecherry and Malabar. The most important thing is never, ever, ever buy ground pepper. It has heat and nothing else. You get no uh, orange notes, pine notes, um, menthol notes, all the delicious things about black pepper. So you have to buy whole peppercorns and grind them yourself, which means you need a pepper mill like this one. This is the Test Kitchen's favorite. It's by Cole and Mason. A couple things that make this unique. First thing is it's very easy to fill. You see, you take the lid off and it's got a nice big hole for adding. You don't even need a, a funnel for this. Second thing we like about this is, you know when you're running out. Hmm, I think I'm running low. Uh, last thing is it has a really wide range of grinds. So you can get really coarse and really fine. Now, if you have a pepper mill already and it doesn't do really coarse, I've got a quick tip for you. So you can put the peppercorns here on a cutting board and use a heavy pot or pan, even a rolling pin, and basically kind of lean into it. And if you want to do cracked pepper, ooh, <laughs> that's, that's a good one. You want to do cracked pepper, you might want to put it in a plastic bag or you might want to use a little less energy. So salt and pepper, next up, spices. When it comes to seasoning, nothing is more fun than spices. So what is a spice? It is any dried part of a plant that we use to flavor foods. So it can be rose petals, it can be berries uh, or flowers, uh, it can be seeds, cumin seeds, it could be bark like cinnamon, it could be a root like ginger or turmeric. Um, so it's basically anything that's dried. So Probably the most important thing is to make sure your spices are pretty fresh. Two years is a good uh, sort of shelf life, life expectancy of your spices. Um, my colleagues in the test kitchen often will label them with the date when they open them. I don't do that. I rely on two simple tests. I've got the sniff test. So I've got ground ginger here. Yeah, that smells like ginger. And it's got all of those notes that I come to expect. So that is a pretty good indication it's gonna be good. Uh, I have some oregano here, which looks kind of at the bottom of the barrel here. I'd say it's not the most amazing aroma. Um, I can do the crumble test. And so take a small bit, crumble it, 
it's a little better, but honestly, not great. I would say this oregano, it is time for some fresh oregano. Most important thing about storage, spices do not like heat and light. So that little rack you have next to your window, next to your stove, bad idea. Keep them in the pantry. Freezer if you're gonna buy large amounts, but actually the cool pantry is fine. So, whole versus ground. I mostly use ground, um, but if I'm gonna use whole spices, you've gotta toast them. So do that in a dry skillet, no fat. You can do it in the oven, but it's more likely it's gonna run away from you. I like to do it on top of the stove so I can really see it and smell it. So you just smell the spices, they're toasted, they're done. Take them out of that hot pan because they may continue to toast if you leave them in there. Um, one of the most important things about uh, whole spices is you're going to need to grind them. So I've got my trusty old grinder. This is actually just a blade grinder that you would use for coffee, but I don't use it for coffee. It's dedicated to spices. Um, I've wiped it out over the years with paper towels, raw rice in there if it gets really dirty, and just process the raw rice to clean it. Um, and it's really essential for obviously if you're going to use whole spices and grind them yourself. So you toast them, cool, and then put them in the spice mill. Um, you're going to be using this kind of like a Marty Teamy, you know, cocktail shaker up and down. Um, whether you are um, toasting them or not, I find one of the secrets of cooking with all spices when they're ground is to make sure they spend a little bit of time blooming in the fat in the dish. So if you're making chili, you cook the onions and the garlic in some oil, then add the spices. Let that cook for a minute before you add the liquid because a lot of the compounds that make spices so delicious are fat soluble. And so letting them spend some time directly in contact with the oil will make sure those flavors permeate the dish. I'm gonna end by teaching you how to make my favorite finishing spice blend, pistachio duca. So, you know, we think of spices as stuff we cook with, but we can use them at the table. Um, Zatar is another Mediterranean spice blend. It's sesame seeds, sumac, and thyme. Uh, duca is related, also starts with sesame seeds. I've got one and a half tablespoons. I've toasted these. Um, I'm gonna put them in my spice mill. Uh, I'm gonna just quickly give them a, a blast. All right, put those into a bowl. Um, duca is really great over bean dishes, soups. I love to put it on a plate of olive oil um, for bread. So that's my sesame seeds. I've now got, um, I've already toasted these. I've got coriander, fennel, and cumin that are going in here. That was one and a half teaspoons of coriander, three quarters of cumin, and half of fennel. I think I'm done. Let's see, get this into the bowl. All right, oh, that smells so good. And last but not least, I've got two tablespoons of toasted and chopped pistachio, along with a half teaspoon of each of salt and pepper. Mix that up. And now I've got a nut spice blend that I can use. You can put this in the fridge for a month um, and will stay good. As I say, putting this over anything makes it more delicious. Spices, the key to smarter seasoning. Herbs are another good way to season your food. If you're using fresh herbs, you're definitely gonna be using them at the end. So they not only make the food taste better, make it look nice. Um, dried herbs, honestly, other than oregano and rosemary, I find that most dried herbs don't have much flavor. Um, those are okay, uh, as long as you add them early in the cooking process so they spend a lot of time in the liquid and have time to sort of soften and permeate the dish with their flavor. Um, it's probably best to think about two categories of herbs, delicate herbs and hearty herbs. And the reason why this matters is because within those two categories, you can substitute one for the other. And so therefore you can use what's growing in your garden or what looks good at the supermarket. So delicate herbs have a milder flavor and they have softer leaves and uh, stalks and sprigs. So mint, basil, parsley, cilantro, chives, all delicate. The hearty ones, oregano, thyme, rosemary, not only are much more potent, they have more woodsy um, uh, sprigs uh, and stalks. So, um, it's also really important because you're going to see a lot of recipes that may call for a quarter cup of basil and you would never want to use a quarter cup of rosemary. So, but if the basil doesn't look good, you can use another delicate herb, let's say a quarter cup of cilantro or a quarter cup of parsley. Probably the most important thing about herbs happens when you get home. Can I just tell you, I hate the misters that they have in most supermarkets, spraying those herbs so they look like they're fresh. The problem is that it encourages rot. So these, uh, herbs, this is some parsley. Um, must have gotten this three or four days ago. 
Um, I purposely left these ties on. And what happens is this causes all kinds of rot. Um, and, you know, if you leave them in here all wet, you come back in a couple days and you basically have slimy, disgusting herbs you can't use. So as soon as you get home, get rid of the ties, get rid of the rubber bands, put the herbs in a spinner, wash and dry them, and then store them in a rolled up paper towel put inside a Ziploc. So this cilantro is two weeks old. Yeah, two weeks old. Take a look at it. Still looks really good because I separated it so that would discourage the rot and I got rid of the excess moisture. Uh, pro tip, cilantro stems, you don't even need to take the leaves off. These are really delicate and you can chop the stems. Don't do that with parsley, but you can do that with cilantro herbs. Make things taste better and look better. Why not save time and use a flavor powerhouse? to build amazing dishes with less effort. I've got four of my favorites here. First up, tomato paste. So I love this because it's sweet, it's sour, and it's a super great source of umami, the thing that makes tomatoes give them that meaty, savory flavor. Because it's got very little liquid, it's got a concentrated flavor, so it's big flavor. And basically anything with tomatoes, put a little bit of tomato paste in, tastes better. Soy sauce. Why add salt when you can add salt and umami? Use this in everything from French onion soup to meatballs to beef stew. Same thing with fish sauce. You get umami as well as salt. Seafood chowders, it's great in a Creole style gumbo. Finally, I love spicy food, but why add chilies when you can add chipotle chilies that have from the tomatoes that umami, they've got some sweetness, they've got some acidity. Really easy ways to make things more delicious. Finally, finish strong. So that usually means a drizzle of olive oil, a little bit of fat makes things better, as well as some acidity. Most bland food would be so much better with a squirt of lemon juice or a drizzle of a really nice vinegar. So finish strong. Now you've got the tools to season with confidence. I want you to go out there and start cooking. <laughs>